So, let me tell you something that you should have already realized by now about this fucking show you're listening to. This shit is supposed to be for mature audiences. As in grown-ups, mentally mature. It's supposed to talk about adult subjects in an adult frame of mind. It's not fucking that at all. This is two emotionally regressed, broken half-wits pretending to offer insight on movies. All they really offer you is an endless sexual perversion and a laundry list of personal paraphilia issues. You can make your own choices in life, but you have to choose this as entertainment. You know you're better than this. You have to know you are better than listening to Cinema Psyops. Consecutive week of Cinema PsyOps. That is 338 weeks nonstop of our Tom Fullery shenanigans, Joe Rogan bashing, NFT hating on motherfucking asses. One of those bastards is me, your host, Court, and joining me all the way across the city of Omaha, locked within his own secret bunker, my co-host, Matt! I'm scared of NFTs. I hide from them. <laughs> we definitely hide from news about them by talking over long about the films that we've been talking about when we've been promising NFT news. Yeah, well, fuck that. <laughs> So you know when I tell Scared. people to holler at your uh, holler at your boy, you know about about yeah, stuff, yeah. right? So yeah. I, I talked some shit about Joe Rogan last weekend. I got some hollered at from some Joe Rogan fans. Really? Yeah. Now this is the part that I am the most perplexed by, Matt. Right? Well, w- where is the cross section that it appeals? Yeah, we to have them? a cross section that. Or did they happen? It, it, did they happen upon me by happenstance? Or I, you know, or no, what? no, no, no. I, I'm sure it's some people who enjoy our show. There is a weird cross strain of. Of right in uh, conservative and liberal folk who all both enjoy Joe Rogan. 
<laughs> now, some may not agree all the time, each one of them, with what Joe Rogan says or does, but there is a cross strain where they feel like they can overlook, all right, he does one thing I dislike, but then, then he did these things I do like. It's a weird fucking thing. Okay, at what point um, does and also platforming then people, neo-Nazis and yeah. people that were banned for misinformation and deplatformed from other whoa, 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 places? Okay, you're asking the wrong guy the wrong questions, because I point, don't know. At what point do you... Car- do, no, I'm asking the people that were... I'm assuming oh. you're still listening, because you still added your boy for a while, so I'm assuming you're still listening, and if, if you do, congratulations, thank you very much for that. You obviously have a very open mind to be able to enjoy both, but I just ask, whenever you are defending him from when I called him a piece of shit for what he says and does, at what point do you compartmentalize the misinformation about COVID that he is pushing hard and costing people their life, and at what point do you compartmentalize the neo-Nazis that he has platformed because he's just asking questions, bro. I don't want that as a fucking defense for your hero, all right? I, I would say the, the part about COVID is indefensible because, yeah, he's, he's spreading false shit about the ability of one to be healthy and not die. Um, just do a couple sit-ups isn't exactly the way to beat COVID. Um, other than that, the same people you say, okay, gave a platform to neo-Nazis, you can say the same thing about anybody who did a talk show in the 90s, including Oprah herself. You could say people have done that. So that might be their one way of explaining that away, is he's also giving a uh, platform to people on the opposite side. What of were the those talk Nazi shows in the '90s? But what this kind of shit is today in podcasting, more or less? Yeah. So it not pretty much that. is. No. What I'm just basically saying is, like, don't at me to try and defend them. Just get the fuck out of my life because I'm not that. Those two things are not defensible to me. All right. I, and yeah, I, I, mean, I get it. I'm just telling you where these people may be coming from. Yeah. No. I, yeah. And I, I get that. I'm just saying that I don't want to hear from you on this. Yeah. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Like, I get you. Like, there is... For me, this is an immovable object on this position with him. <laughs> and no matter how much you may love me and my show and him and his show, I'm not going to be budged. So don't, don't, yeah. don't, so don't, don't, there's no convincing me of that. Don't but, at court uh, ways that Joe Rogan's good because court don't want to hear it. Right. Just like, don't fucking come at me about the NFTs and how they're not fungible because I'm not, I don't want to fucking hear it and I don't want to give you fucking oxygen anymore, but I sure as fuck am going to make fun of that shit. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. So yeah. I mean, there's just some things you don't want to hear and that's one of them. So so <laughs> what, what nobody really wants to hear is the personal bullshit like that, that I, yeah. I I'm going uh-huh. through, I'm sure. But like I had my moments, you know, yeah. where I've, I've been dealing with this and, uh, I just, I think it's really f- the thing that I find the most interesting is I, I, I want to know that cross section a little bit better, but at the same time, I don't want you to fucking defend him to me. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. Um, you're well aware of what he is. You're well, aware, I mean, you're already well aware of all the things they probably are saying to you to, to defend him to you. There's no need to really defend him to you. Uh, if you enjoy Joe Rogan, go ahead and keep Joe enjoying Joe Rogan. Just don't at us with that horse shit. Cause we don't care. Also one last thing when everyone uh, else in the fucking world does get deplatformed for pushing the same kind of misinformation for COVID-19 and yet you maintain your job just because it would cost your company way too much money to get rid of you and you do the least amount possible to try and keep things smoothed over so your company that you're working for doesn't lose money you're still a piece of shit damn anyway so my dear killer let's spoil it for everybody we are five for five giallo january has been amazing yeah now these notes are going to be a fucking mess because i I thought the last movie was note heavy right this thing was fucking ridiculous right more more dialogue of people talking over each other more pausing and rewinding and we were we were talking off air there's an english language version on the disc yeah which would make so much would help us be able to make so much more sense of it oh this thing would have if this were if this were english dubbed and that was the one we watched i'd have like 20 clips <laughs> yeah the clips would start at like mark zero 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 and end at the <laughs> hour keep, and 38 minute mark yeah it would just keep going because i would have no other recourse because <laughs> that's what so i've got this gist of the movie <laughs> but for details you may need to help <laughs> right so 
Uh, I tried to pay attention again this week as much as I possibly could. Um, Mm -hmm. And just for everybody that wants us just to get on with the show and stop bitching about Court's personal grudges that he's been having to hold here due to something he said on the podcast. This is something that's (laughs) new to me, by the way, being accosted for something that I've ever actually said. And yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. I'm more hurt that it's him than something else. Yeah. Like, (laughs) like why? (laughs) But anyway, it had to be him. Yeah. yeah, Sorry. Sorry. That was the cause of it. I'm still upset. I'm sorry. I'm just, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to cry for months about this. I, I wouldn't. It's, it's like that last <laughs> time I heard someone say, let's go, Brandon, and actually mean it. I, I just, I Oof. cried for like two, three months straight. It's ridiculous. Dude, I, I was, uh, stopped into a bar on Friday night for a quick drink and some dude right next to us was wearing that one of those sweatshirts that says, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> 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 well, good God Almighty! Okay, so let's let's wrap it up and bring it back into the show here before everybody just abandons ship on yeah. how hopeless we've become in the society that we live in, Matt. <laughs> right? No shit. <laughs> All right, so I'm sticking with the murder ballots because I want to wrap up Giallo January that way, even though I'm stretching it into February. We're recording it on the 31st. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> We promise. It's all being done in January. I am sticking with murder ballads once again, and this time I tried to focus on murders or implied murders of some sort by a source of water. So, mm-hmm. even though we didn't get to her last week, Miss PJ Harvey's Down by the River will be on our pirate radio edit right after this Legion Patreon ad. This'll keep you quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You call me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legionpodcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. subject matter of that song matches way too fucking closely to the subject matter of my dear killer. Yeah, right? Ooh, man, that got real fucking dark real fucking fast, and I'm very sorry about that, Matt. Also, uh, there was an English language trailer, but it was pretty much all fucking dialogue, and part of it was the end of the fucking movie, where the police detective is fucking, like, you know, telling everybody, like, how he figured out who the killer is. Yeah. I'm not fucking playing that, so we might as well just go into the fucking review for My Dear Killer. Word up. So, My Dear Killer. The first 20 minutes start, uh, we got a guy, he brought in some, uh, uh, excavator to, uh, dredge out, it seems, a swamp area, a little lake area. Uh, the guy's directing the dude in the machine. We don't see who's in the machine, and that dude uses it to pick up the dude and then decapitate him. This is the point in the movie where I sit up, I look at the screen, say, what the fuck, back it up, watch it again, realize, no, I just saw what I think I fucking saw, and know to myself right here that we are already five for five for Giallo January, and that's why I felt fine with 
was spoiling it with everybody because that was in a trailer I saw that was supposedly a trailer. Yeah, that was a, that was a opening one minute and you already uh, got a decap. Right. Like so if, it's good. If you can't be patient for a movie that would do that for you in the opening scene of a film, yeah. I got nothing for you, man. I, I can't fucking help <laughs> you. I really can't. It's all over, man. We can't help you. We can't help whatever <laughs> horse shit you're doing with your life. Right. When the movie approaches you with this much fucking goodwill for a giallo going, you want yeah. decapitations, here you go. This is the most ridiculous one we can think of, but it fucking works because you're like, well, of course, if he's trying to dig up something that somebody doesn't want found, they're going to show up and kill him. And why not just use the excavator? Exactly. Right. <laughs> It's fucking awesome. I mean, it's just convenient. <laughs> and it's fucking cool. Like, way to open your giallo, my dear killer. You have my attention. Uh, well, the now investigators are there, of course. Uh, they all talk how the driver cannot be found. One theorizes that this was an accident and that the driver, not knowing what else to do, just ran. We call that guy lazy. Yeah, that's yeah, that's my lazy dude. That's that's kind of cop I would have been. <laughs> yep. like, this looks like a complete total accident. All right, boys, <laughs> let's kick back for the rest of the day. Uh, the, the lead inspector though is searching in the truck and he finds the papers for the company that loaned out this machine. So he talks to the guy who runs the company and he says they haven't seen the operator at all. And he said this is weird because that operator has a spotless record, no issues whatsoever. And then he says he hopes he's okay because he. Owes so as a wife of four children. Okay, and I, I got to back up here, and I got to think for a second. Right. Um, following the idea that it is an accident where the laborer would run is not as insane as someone fucking murdered this guy with an excavator. Yeah, so I the mean, cops it, not exactly lazy. No, it, it's, it's it's just the just... most logical thing right now. <laughs> And also, who wants to think, yeah, guys decapitating people with ex- excavators. I mean, why, why Besides not? me. Like, I would be the kind of detective where everybody would be like, Psyop, shut the fuck up. Nobody just murders someone with an excavator. Right? I feel like I'm just accosting this fucking cop because he's a cop. Yeah, I mean, you're well within your right. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. I got issues. I admit it. <laughs> um. So, anyway, uh, then we see a lady. She IDs the dead dude. Uh, then the detective calls uh, a doctor and he leaves a message for her. It sounds like a very personal message for uh, a young a woman doctor. So uh, I don't think he's uh, looking for help here. But as he does this, the lady meets with the detective. Uh, she was not married to the victim, just kind of his girlfriend. And they're like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. And I guess that's says, supposed to be salacious for the time frame or... Probably. Because may- they keep saying, Mrs. or your husband. And she's like, I don't, I'm not Mar- I wasn't married to him. <laughs> yeah, or maybe it's just to show how old-fashioned and presumptuous the cop is, because maybe for that time it's not so bizarre yeah. in Europe, perhaps. It's one of the other. Either it's to show like, oh, like, look how, you know, look how risque of a life they lead. They lived in sin. Or it's the cop reacting in such a way and just assuming they're automatically married shows how much of an old fogey he is. Exactly. Yep. Nope. You're not wrong. Um. So anyway, she says that he had been acting strange lately, but she had never heard of the guy who was operating the excavator or the supposed operator. She had never heard of that man. Before. Can we just call so, it the murder weapon for me? Please? The murder weapon. Yeah. The operator of the murder weapon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> you're very welcome. I'm giddy like uh, a little kid. I'm like clasping my hands like I'm getting away with something naughty. <laughs> They go through and they find out that the operator of the murder weapon has no priors. Uh, no, no, no other priors. No, no, nothing else that, you know, would even make any sense there. Right. So the very sound and logical theory that the murder weapon was, in fact, a piece of equipment that was operated by accident and not yeah. intent um, is starting to fall apart for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I um, love the idea that, that you and I just automatically assume it's a murder weapon like just from looking at it <laughs> i love this tact that we're doing it's so dumb right it's so fucking stupid oh god um <laughs> well then they get a call that no matter they found the operator he's just hanging and he certainly is he's hanging around there not having a good time he, he looks like a suicide um are you making a pun about the fact that he was hanging noose. from a noose well he's just hanging around you, I mean, you need to tell people that he is hanging from a noose and that is just, why he is hanging around oh uh, yeah but I mean, he was just hanging out. 
yes, he's very clearly had a murder stage to look like yeah. a suicide. And the inspector says as much as he goes through everything. Uh, Basically, the- he picks up the can the guy's supposed to have stood yeah. on without anything else around, and the guy is not tall enough to stand on top of the can to commit suicide. Correct. Uh, so, um, the inspector then tells the chief that they need to go back and start searching the, the swamp, the lake. While searching, um, the detective visits a vagabond who lives in a place that overlooks the swamp. Talks to the vagabond and, uh, the lady who's there with him. Find out he just likes to, you know, take things people throws away and brings them back. Okay, then so we find the, out- the wise hermit and or the witness who is, um, a hermit or homeless or lives in a cave or, um, you know, something along those lines is very much a jello trope. It's like yeah. all over the place. And this particular guy is the crotchiest of them that I've seen in a long time. Oh, yeah. He is a surly, mean old fucker. He is. But he has a lady there who he cares for and gives a lot of things to. And that lady tells the inspector that actually that swamp hadn't always been there. It was just dry land. But there was a uh, uh, a sewage problem. And so that's why it's there's that lake there. Uh, yeah, so I think they say it's sewage, but I think it's supposed to be like a storm drain issue, and it just storm drains backed up there, yeah. and it's never drained back out. Yeah. And then they she asks if the, she's there for the Maroni case, and he goes no, and he leaves. And that's important later. Yeah, because she obviously is interested in such a case, and it has something to do with this same area. Yes. Uh, that night, the detective is having dinner with his doc- with the doctor who he wanted to speak to. Apparently, they are dating. As they eat, uh, they somewhat fight because she wants to spend more time. And she wants to have more time with him. They want to have more time together. And he kind of is like, you know, I can't, you know, I can't do that. And he goes to the bedroom. She follows, and uh, that they, they get to make him with the love. And that ends the opening twenty minutes. Can I ask you a question about their relationship? Word. Do you think that their foreplay is to start an argument to get their blood worked up and then they sort of like work it out in the bedroom and like no. apologize to each other with sex? Possibly, but I also think she's getting very soon, like she was talking about how she met all these people, like these women who had for less than a, you know, for, for lack of a better term, become old maids. And I think she's waiting for him to, you know, be with her more so they can have a child together, all that kind of stuff. She wants to start a life and he's not yeah. ready to commit yet because he he needs to live fast and loose and play free. Well, and I don't even think that. I think it's his job. He's called away a lot uh, being the lead inspector, and I think that's just something he's he's dealing with. All right. If, unless there's anything else, we should probably move on to the next 20 minutes. Yes. All right. All right, all right, all right here we go. Anyway, we cut to, uh, as they are kind of laid in post-coital, just laying there talking, someone's watching them. Oh, by the way, all the nudity in this film that I can pretty much remember except for one incident. It's all thank you. Yeah. yeah one, one really Fuck fucking off bad. incident. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Uh, this is the morning Let's after see. their post-coitus cuddling thing or whatever. Well, yeah, and, they're, and then he says he needs to start checking the victim's home. So somebody's watching him and knows his next move. Yeah, someone is kind of like looking through their window and kind of reading his lips, right? Is what it looks like. I think you can hear it from where they are at. So oh. it must not be a thick window because you can just hear him. Or, or given the temperatures that often happen in parts of Italy, perhaps the windows are just open because it's hot as fuck. Yeah. I mean, that could be too. Uh, he's checking clothes of the victim and he finds a key. Um, she says, uh, the girlfriend says, hey, maybe you want to go check out his office, the insurance office he worked at. So he goes there and he talks to the, uh, you know, his boss. He's like, no, that's not for any of our filing cabinets. And he said he was actually an, ex- he was an insurance inspector. Investigator. And said, investigator. And he calls, then his boss calls in for those Moroni file case, the case files, which of course the inspector remembers the woman talking about. And uh, it seems that this case was about a little girl who was kidnapped. It was a complicated case. As the girl was taken, the father decided to pay the ransom, but followed the mediator, and the father was then taken as well and killed. Uh, they were planning on paying out the life insurance to, of course, the little girl, because that's who his 
payoff was to, but she, of course, is also dead, and they, but they must confirm her death, uh, and like, you know, because the body was badly decomposed, and that's what he was doing. He was trying to confirm that she was dead, so then the money would go to her mother. So he was dredging the lake looking for further evidence of yes, proof for that her the death. little girl was dead. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, the victim's girlfriend then gets a call, uh, that one of the Vic's P.O. boxes are gonna, it's gonna be closed permanently. So then she called the cop, telling him that, and saying, hey, maybe that's what this key that we found is for. And the cop tells her, yeah, go check it out, because he's just sitting there not doing anything. <laughs> well, then he tells all the other cops about that, and the other cops look at him and go, post offices won't do that. That's illegal. They're never supposed to even know. Which so basically means out. he got fucking duped and socially engineered. Yes. And then we see uh, the lady. She is walking to the post office, and she is being followed. The inspector, uh, the, he's at a car, but there's heavy traffic so he gets out he's gonna go on foot she uh goes to the post office box opens it up and there's a letter or some type of paper in there and as she turns around the killer's there and strangles her to death then grabs the letter however it tears in her hand okay this seems to be a giallo trope too right like you murder yeah. someone and then the victim uh, then somehow they... retains the evidence you tried to get off yeah. of them the the death the death uh, grip hold yeah the death grip there you go yeah yeah, yeah. well yeah, not, o- exactly. not only that but like <laughs> in Dario Argento's opera someone swallows the fucking necklace the killer's trying to hide but then well, the killer um, spoiler alert the killer then turns around and cuts it the fuck out of them well that's fun <laughs> that's <laughs> that's gruesome too but we we're not talking about that movie so we'll move on that's that's just good clean family fun i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> but uh they talk to witnesses but each one gives a different description of who the killer is then uh he finds the piece of paper in the victim's hands um it death seems grip. to be a death grip See, Seems to be a drawing that uh, seems a child had done, and there was a stamp that was ripped off. But the more they read it, they could tell it's for the institute. Uh, it's an institute for uh, children, like a school, and it was that little girl's school. So the doc visits the teacher, and she states that that is definitely the little girl's drawing who was kidnapped. These deaths says, are so obviously tied to this little yes. girl's missing disappearance and death. And I think our uh, inspector friend is coming to that grips as well i mean us as an audience as soon as we found out that uh the murder weapon <laughs> of the excavator yeah. was used to try and cover up the fact that there is something probably to look for in that sludge yeah i mean that that's already obvious so we know that it has to do something with this little girl because then the person also asked about it from the excavator so it's all embroiled in the case already yep true true the teacher says the original victim he was up there asking all sorts of questions about trying to get any identifiable marks on the little girl's body that maybe could help identify because her body was so badly decomposed when they found her um she then said, he said, uh, did he take this, did he ask for this picture? She goes, no, but I did get, I had her pictures and all her stuff on my desk if her family wanted them. But she said she had never heard from the family. And then she got a phone call and she left to go take that call. And it's possible that the victim then took that drawing because he saw something in it from her desk. Um... So then, uh, the inspectors, uh, they're checking out that drawing again. Still, they're trying to think of, like, why it's important. Uh, and then we see someone's following the teacher, and the inspector then realizes it's a drawing of the Vagabond's house. And then he goes, the, then he figures out that the killer is trying to get rid of any trail left to him about this case. And that's why he's killing people now. And they gotta call the teacher because they know she's in danger. They well, don't the teacher, put this together quick enough for my taste but i think no. it's to add to the tension for the teacher and what's about to happen suspense yeah suspense because yeah. yeah. we see the teachers walking home she's obviously being followed she runs to her door the main door to her apartment building she tries to close it then we see an umbrella come through and you think ah the killer's there but nah it's just one of the neighbors who also lives in the same apartment building she gets home uh she changes thank you movie yeah that's uh, uh that's okay nudity because uh the film chose to show us that and she yeah. is not being leered at by anybody else so i don't feel guilty nope then she gets a phone call uh she picks up but no one's there and we see it's the killer actually calling the killer leaves then the phone off the hook so that way i think it's so she can't hang up and start a new line um 
Then all of a sudden she uh, hears a noise outside her window. It sees a hand slap on the window. It's actually just a glove that's being hung out to dry. It's just a weird, cheap fucking scare. I'm starting to get a little pissed at you, movie. What are you doing? Yeah, exactly. Then she gets a knock at the door. She answers it, and it seems to be someone she knows. We know this is a killer because we never see this person. But she's talking to him. Cops are still trying to get a hold of her. Uh, She then tells the person that... uh, Quote, this is all I know, and if you want to know any more, you'll have to talk to the police. So she's obviously as- answering questions. Um, the person that gets up, uh, he grabs what appears to be like a metal cutter, electric cutter type thing. You know, the circular saw. There you go. Yes, it's some uh, type of uh, oscillating saw, yeah, or something. Yep. And then he chases her around with it and then shreds her to fucking bits with it. And that is fucking gross, especially the hit on the leg. Okay, movie, I saw what you were doing. You were trying to prolong before we got to... Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I, I apologize, movie. It was my bad. I should have trusted nah. you more. Because clearly, damn. <laughs> and... As the killer leaves, he takes a child's book, most likely the book of that little girl with him, and that ends that 20 minutes. Holy fucking shit is her Ooh. death gruesome and brutal yeah. and violent and fuck. Yeah, just the worst. Ah, you feel bad. <laughs> yeah, it's really fucking brutal. Like, I I was not expecting that, and it comes out of nowhere, and it's, like, pretty fucking... Uh, all right, there is obviously moments that the anatomy does not match up right, yes, but I still push the I believe button because the actress screaming sells it, and just the way that it happens so quickly and brutally, like, it tricks my brain. Even watching it on my projector, and that weird thing that was happening, like, that they were warning you about at the beginning of the movie with the frame skips, I think was happening happening during her murder scene too and that fucked with me even more it was really effective and like when her death ended i was like jesus christ i paused it for a second and just like i had to catch my breath i was like that was really fucking intense yeah that was pretty fucking nasty man that was a that was a fucking there was a lot of money that went into that death scene yeah dude i was like expect i was not expecting the type of brutality you would get from pieces but that's the type of death we had there with that power tool ripping her to shreds yeah (laughs) It was pretty fucking brutal. I was really fucking impressed. And, um, I, you know what I do? I feel I exactly how I felt. I was like, I'm starting to get pissed off at this like glove slap in the window bullshit movie. And then they do that. And I'm like, I am so sorry, movie. I should have never questioned you. Well, well, movie, (laughs) I guess I know why I'm the worst more person ever. I should not have yelled at you. (laughs) Clearly I should have trusted you more movie and I need to work on myself. And I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. Do better court. Do better. I will be better to you, movie, and I will be better, Matt. <laughs> Good job. We're proud of you for admitting it. Um, you're still going to be deplatformed, though, for blaming that movie. That's wrong. Um, <laughs> Somebody's probably bound to stop listening for something here. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Oh, well, it's just going to be just, that's the way it is. Fuck it. So uh, we'll start the next 20 minutes. If I never hear from you, I'll never know you existed, I suppose. That, that makes me sad. That, oh, dude, existential crisis over here. I, uh, not that a few shots of alcohol can't fix. So anyway, uh, we start the next 20 minutes where the cops, they are, uh, they're, all the cops are talking at the crime scene. It's obvious that the teacher knew who the killer was. Uh, they were well aware of this person. They let him in. However, However, there are no prints. So anyway, then the inspector goes to visit the little girl's family. Visits her mom, talks to her for a little bit. It is obvious that mom has gone bye-bye. Uh, that this has really turned her over the edge. She still thinks her daughter is alive. At this point, another couple shows up. And this couple is apparently her in-laws. It is her husband's brother and his wife. They all sit down together. And his wife kind of flips out, saying, you know, his brother was always kind of cold to everybody. The brother-in-law lost a hand saving the guy's life in war. Uh, he has a wooden hand. And, you know, the brother-in-law's like, oh, stop it. This is not, we're not talking like this anymore. And um, she takes it really fucking far and really lays on the guilt trip. And was she like drunk? Was that what it was? She was like drinking too much and was started talking like that? Or was she just a fucking total drag pain in the ass? Uh, I, I think sober. she was just a pain in the ass. She was just mad that her, you know, she felt like this person she loved always was taken advantage of by another guy, uh, by by this guy's brother. Right. But like, she's also fucking. Know, why? She's also fucking tromping all over the fucking dead, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
She's tromping all over the dead. In yeah. his fucking house to um, his fucking widow, right? No, the widow's not listening. And then the widow gets up and she starts looking for her daughter. Almost reliving the day her daughter was taken. So that kind of sucks. I don't think the the wife or the, the mom of the, the little girl is really well aware of anything that's happening in the real world anymore. Yeah, she's reliving the trauma over and over again because she can't process what happened on that day. Um, yeah. And yeah. And she's not going to get better if they continue to let her be here like this. But she's rich, so no one's going to stop her. Exactly. Um, so uh, so then uh, they finally admit that the brother-in-law admits he's been paying a guy for information. This guy who says he has info about everything that happened, all that. He's been paying him, and the guy went dark as of a few weeks ago. Like, they haven't heard from him at all. And we find out that the guy he's been paying was our original victim. And uh, the inspector tells tells him yeah he's dead um so the guy that got hired by not only the insurance investigator but he was also hired by the one-handed brother-in-law well he wasn't hired or brother he came to the ha- uh, brother-in-law <laughs> or brother yeah instead hey listen i have information i need money so he was kind of the inspector was playing both sides of the coin here being an insurance investigator and doing this uh that's just being a fucking detective you play all sides for the money to get the information um (laughs) especially if you're a crooked detective that will get paid to subvert the information that you find that's true too which i think that insurance investigator might have been he he was probably he probably was the insurance investigator was yeah that's definite (laughs) okay there we go um all right so then at this point he the uh, inspector talks to the help uh, the uh, maids and the driver. And they were all there when the little girl went missing. Um, they flash back to when they were all looking for her. The mom flashback in the flashback. The mom gets the ransom call. Um, then a kidnapper's note shows up. Uh, then that is when the dad suggests that his brother-in-law go drop off the money. And everyone was kind of like, all right, fine, fuck it. I guess I will. But holy shit, that's kind of messed up that you're not, you know. Well, I I thought that, I thought that was his brother that's why he's trusting him because that's the man who saved his life maybe but everyone was kind of like i don't know why he that dad didn't go but okay or no they wondered why another assistant there didn't go because he was also very close to the daughter and why he wouldn't have offered to go yeah um so that's where we're gonna come up to some problematic shit oh Uh, yes because now we cut to the investigator uh interviews this guy who was also close to the daughter and as he interviews him about, you know, and the guy's so sad that she died and all this, and you know, he's so heartbroken, and then talks shit about the family, stating that actually the um, the dad was getting ready to kick his brother out of the house and his wife and kind of cut him off. Uh, and it kind of made everyone mad. And at one point, they were suggesting trying to keep his daughter away from him. Um so it was just a, a weird, convoluted thing about how a brother-in-law can keep uh, uh, a daughter away from her father. But there you go. Well, um, um, also what was kind of going on is he was going to yeah. be divorcing his wife, I think. Yes. Was, that's, I think that was also going to be a truth. Yeah. yeah so. And they were trying to, like the brother-in-law was trying to help the wife because she was sure that the custody was like the only thing that the wife may have had. And b- yeah. basically the plan all along, one way, shape, or form for anybody involved in this including our killer was to use the daughter for ransom for a yes. better deal for this divorce that was supposedly going to happen or as a way well, to keep the husband there and to keep their position in the house then at this point well at this point if chris hansen was in any of our homes we'd be in a lot of shit okay all right i'll handle this all right please do yeah i don't know what I'm, i don't know how to get out of this one all right it is in a non-sexual manner but at this point after the guy is saying some things that are very untoward and makes it sound like he is very much a fucking pedophile, I'm not going to mince words. That's exactly how that man's yeah. talking. The Chris Hansen yes. moment is exactly this. A young girl comes walking in saying that she's ready to be painted and is completely fucking naked. It's pretty much full frontal nudity on the little girl, but it's not done in a salacious or Ugh. sexual manner. But is it extremely disturbing to have that just fucking show up and without it, any context a- at all, especially after the things that that man just said and it's pretty clear what's going on to the point where the inspector actually says we are shutting that shit down right the fuck now 
Yeah, it's it punches you in the face. Yeah. Just out of no it's like a a right cross out of nowhere. Yeah, my fan edit will not contain this. That's also why I want to do a fan edit, my friend. Yeah, yeah, I mean I'm just oh god, there was just no reason for it. But Other than to show the fact that this guy's a fucking this creep. This guy's a pedo. Yeah, this guy's and a fucking creep and there's very close to the person who went missing who was a child. Right, and that oh. is why they didn't want him to go save the little girl with the money. Yeah. Yeah, it's just uh No. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That was fucking. All right. Yeah. We're okay. We're out of this. Okay. No, there's one more thing that I also want to say. Uh, The little girl was also there with her mother because her mother was like, um, you know, sorry, it didn't work out or whatever when the little girl was leaving. Oh yeah. So uh, whatever, whatever fucked up weird arrangement that they had, um, you don't need to have a child pose naked to paint them. My man, that's just fucked. No, that's fucked. And you were doing that because, well, uh, from the way he was discussing it, it's because he's a sick fuck. He's a sick fuck. He is definitely a... And really, all the ways he acts later on in the movie, he's definitely a pedophile. Yeah, it's fucking gross, and they go really overboard with it, and I think it's too be salacious, but man, that does not fucking age well at no, all. it does not age well. And the there's movie. so much other stuff that they put in the film that pretty much makes it obvious that he's a pedo, and that's why, that the, you don't need that at all, and it's just it fucking gross. Really didn't need that. Not even a little. All right. Okay, so, uh, then, uh, at the end of the whole, I sh- we need to see this, at the end of the whole questioning the pedo thing, he also finds a little statue that he recognizes, or he asks him if he recognizes this little statue that was found at one of the scenes, and the guy says no. Uh, well, that night, the pedo, he goes and gets out of bed, takes a bunch of those statues, all different sizes, into a bag, and he throws them into the swamp area. Well, dun, 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 looking sus as fuck. They get pulled out by the vagabond dude. And like uh, no time either like yeah. like they should have seen each other in passing pretty much like should have been like uh oh, hey there how's it going goodbye and that's the end of that 20 minutes <laughs> all right yeah the the pedo thing is really super fucking uncomfortable and we already we it's, dealt with the fucking nudity we and went we went through the whole thing yeah so. yeah so we we're not going to go back and talk about that because that was fucked and fuck off movie and like i said one of the reasons i want to do a fan edit is to remove that and that's for me that's my choice my personal choice to do that that's a good. That's a good. That's a good personal choice. <laughs> yeah, because I don't want to fucking see that again. Yeah. Yeah. Me neither. Uh, despite that, the film actually does continue to win me over because I'm like, okay, that was a horrible choice, but I don't think it played as badly at the time they made it as it does now. Probably not. No. But it's still fucking disgusting no matter still, what time frame that they did that and it's still gross. It's real fucking bad. <laughs> and there, here's the problem though, right? We're still talking about it even though we want to get over it and the film does have to bring you back from that moment and it clearly did for us because we're both saying it's a five for five and yeah. I mean, once you deal with the fact that that fucking happens you will still have a very good movie and like i said i just don't want that in the movie anytime i watch it again word the fuck up no one should want that because that is just it's just it's not like you've said it's so not even fucking needed it serves no purpose other than to be salacious and gross yeah exactly oh oh jesus christ (laughs) all right right, let's let's keep going the next 20 minutes the night of the, we then go back in time to the night of the drop off. We see the brother, and he, you know, gets, you know, a truck flashes him and gets out. And then a group of guys get out and they start beating the living crap out of the brother. Then we see the dad come walking up from uh, some, uh, you know, some grass and he gets beaten up, thrown in a car, and they take off. Uh, we're back at the present time and the cops talk to, uh, they, uh, they talk to a businessman. They, they figure out they need to talk to this one businessman who they figure out the truck came from his business and his business costs a lot of money. So they talk into him and to get him to talk, the investigator was like, Hey, you were found in a brothel with two minors, you know, two underage girls. And he was like, I didn't know they were underage. He goes, ah, that's too bad. You know, fuck it. But if you help me out, I can make it go away by answering some questions. You're not winning me over movie what the fuck now you're doing this yeah right um so anyway he uh talks to him because you know i never really heard from anyone but i was getting blackmailed by somebody and you know here or i have this book that has all the amounts and where i'm at all the time so the guy didn't really have a ton of information for him but then he goes hey where were you on the date of the the original murder the the when the dude got deta- decapitated anyway he checks his book it's completely blank and even he seems shocked 
shocked by that. Like, usually he probably has something written in the books all the time. Yeah, it's weird that that is a thing, and I don't... This is a thread that we don't really go back to, do we? No, no, this is never visited again. This yeah. whole scene probably could have been tossed out. Okay, yeah, because I was having a moment of crisis where I'm like, wait, I completely forgot about all of this, and it's because it fucking goes nowhere. They never use it again yeah. after this, like, that he wasn't yeah. on that night. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was pretty worthless. It's a red herring moment, okay. Yeah, uh, big time. So the inspector's talking to his boss, and he goes, well, all the leads are dying. Literally, all the leads are dying. So then he says, it's time to go back to the swamp where all this started. Um, the uh, cop, uh, he's checking out um, the building next to the swamp or lake area where the dad and daughter were found. The remains were found. And they said the only clue that was there was this little nail by the father's body. Then as he, he it's important to yes. note that it's a rusty nail, nail. with yeah. a with a um, polished tip. Like the tip was still solid and normal, but the rest of the nail was rusted. Yeah. Uh, he then rolls this rock down this hill where he's knowing like the little girl could have, and it rolls all the way down into the lake. So then uh, a bunch of people all show up, including the 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 brother and the, uh, the sister in law and all these other people for the anniversary of the the deaths. Um, he states there's more evidence in the swamp and that they need to find it. He kind of tells the whole group that and kind of shows them that you know she was able to slip something out of there. Um, that night, uh, the cop is uh, making the love with his lady friend. But he kind of stops it because he's like, no, I, he goes, my mind's not in it. And he goes, I think I made a mistake. And she goes, how? And he goes, uh, he um, stated that he he knows uh, that the killer now knows what was thrown out by the girl and what they're looking for. And he challenged the killer a little bit too much on this one. So then he calls for all the suspect movements, but they have everyone but one of them. But they're going to figure out what's happening there. Um, so he pretty much figures it out when he's in bed with her because he can't take yeah. his mind off the case because it's really, really bugging him. But then he finds out what he's looking for when she grabs a mirror off the wall and shows it to him and says, look what you're becoming. And then he sees the the circle that the imprint that the mirror left on the wall and the nail and he knows the same circle was in that shed so he knows that he threw out a circular mirror yeah so there was some type of a mirror still in the shed yeah yeah uh so then he gets a call from the cops and they lost one of the suspects so he leaves and he knows he can find the girl's message in the swamp that's where it is and that ends at 20 minutes and we get ready to go into the final Okay, when he starts investigating and the stuff that starts, they talk about what happened to the little girl and yeah. and you know that those things kind of we take find my out mind she away. Was starved. Yeah, yeah, that she starved to death and that the father was basically like beaten with a rock and left for dead, and so she was left there with the corpse of her father to slowly starve to death. Like the horror yeah. of what happens to her completely overtakes my mind, um, and I start thinking about that, and that's how the movie won me back over and got me wanting to finish the film from. The that previous moment where I was like, okay, well, this is actually a really well thought out story because what they're starting to develop now is really interesting. And the guys assaulting yeah. not one, but two crime sprees simultaneously, <laughs> right? Like he's, he's opening up a cold case and solving that while sussing out the killer who is very sloppily trying to cover their tracks by leaving a bigger murder trail. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is really interesting concept for a giallo and I really, really fucking dig it. And this kind of won me back over and I'm ready to move on, you know? All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. This whole kind of area is when it's over again. This Giallo's a given. A it's a it's a, 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 a valley hills and valleys in this son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the low got really fucking low, and yeah. it does not need to be there. And we've already talked about it. Yeah. So the final twenty minutes, we start the killer. It breaks into the vagabond's house and beats him to death with the statue, and then replaces a beard on the statue. Uh, like he fixes the face uh again this is a red herring we never know anything about this after this the cops get the cop gets there he's looking around uh and then he sees a message that says when you're bored call me and it's the lady's phone number it was for the vagabond so he was no her phone number well he calls the number and talks to the old lady and he warns her not to open the door for anyone and to see if 
if he can find she can find a mirror, like a small circular mirror, and she exactly knows where it is and has it. But as she's getting off the phone, she can hear noises in the uh, in the basement, and someone's coming up. Uh, the killer does break in. He gets at her, but she's able to block a lot of his attacks with the mirror. But her arm does get cut. But right then, the cop gets there. He gets inside. Uh, the killer runs away. Um, and so he gets the mirror uh, from the old lady. And he gets all his suspects together. You know, the big roundabout kind of goes about everything that happened. He knows why the person did this. All this stuff. He knows who the killer is. This whole entire scene was the, the fucking killing. trailer, dude, that I was talking yeah. about. This is nice. the scene. Like, why would you fucking this, do that? This this would have been the clip, but it's okay. Yeah, but like, it's awesome as a clip for sure. But why would you do that as a fucking trailer? Like, you're giving away know. almost all of the, the whole ghost, basically, right there. Because you're showing your yeah. surviving suspects, man why dumbness uh (laughs) (laughs) i guess like if that's an actual official trailer then that's fucking stupid to do yeah so um he then goes uh one by one like showing him the mirror showing the mirror and like the pedo dude is looking really really scared really scared well he shows the back of the mirror to pedo dude who screams the light he pulls out a light plug lights go out you're like what the fuck people are fighting the lights come on and he, with another friend, you can hear someone whimpering behind a chair. They move it. It's the brother. The brother did it. He was going to get kicked out of the house, cut off from his brother, who he had saved his life. He was pissed. So he wanted him dead, and he wanted his daughter to starve, all that. And he killed them all. We see on the back of the mirror was a drawing. She was a very good drawer, and it was of a stick figure man with only one arm. And uh, roll credits. Holy fuck, that is one dark ending. It was the uncle just because he was getting kicked out. And it wasn't even like it went bad and he just had to do it. It was fucking intentional because he wanted them to suffer just for the cruelty of it. And that is a gut punch of a fucking ending. Ugh, just fucking horrendous. That is giallo as fuck. The cruelty, man. Jesus. Yep. And he wanted her to to suffer. Yeah, like he specifically was, his intention was to starve her to death. That's how he chose for her to die. Just for the wanton cruelty of it. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, when you think about all of that, and uh, at one point I thought it was going to be the mom. Okay, yeah, I could see where. Who is, not not that she killed, then when it got around to this killer's the same person who did that, I was like, oh, never mind, I guess not. But it was like midway through the movie when you didn't know, I thought maybe like everyone had a hand in this and the mom was just killing people. Oh, like she's pretending to lose her mind like a Hamlet kind of way where she's getting vengeance, but no one will suspect her because clearly she's mad. Exactly. Oh, that would have been a cool, interesting little plot line twist too, man. I would have dug that if they did that. Uh, You know, I really kind of dug this through line of what they did and it got so, so fucking dark. And the way that we are hearing about this much darker, horrific murder and then the desperation with which the killer goes to try and cover this up, only bringing more attention to themselves and making it more obvious who they are with every death because they become more and more desperate. And it's really fucking bizarre. Uh, There's one thing that you definitely missed, but I didn't want to correct you just for the brevity. The piece that he puts back, there was a piece broken off of one of the scenes of the murder where the person was beaten with one of those clubs. The pedo guy got rid of it because he knew that the brother took that and he was he was covering up. That's why he screamed when the brother was exposed, because now he's exposed. Gotcha. As well, which is why yeah. he screamed on this, because I guess he All was right. the well, partner. Well, that makes a lot more sense to me than what was happening. Yeah, I'm thinking he was kind of the partner in on the uh, in on the kidnapping in some way, shape, or form because they got the girl to go with them. But, yeah. but his motivation was different. And obviously, if your plan was to let your niece starve all along, I'm pretty sure you don't care that she's locked in a place that a pedo knows where she is and wired, like, wrapped around her arms and legs that she can't defend herself. I'm sure you don't care about yeah. that either, because you're a cruel son of a bitch, but that was heavily implied that that's what was going on. I'm guessing at the end by the why the doctor or why the detective shows on the back of the mirror and it makes him scream because maybe he's on like he's part of that drawing too. 
That or just proves more that he's a pedo. <laughs> right, right. Um, uh, I I like the way that they use the fact or they set up the fact that the girl's an exceptional uh, artist. Uh, they do say that she's behind in like writing or something like that or for communication or she was at the time, but she was always like, she always had like really super high marks in art and that's what they use because the child's drawings, that's a very giallo thing too, like a child's drawings offer evidence or a peek into the life of a crime that happened of, or something like that. Yeah. those lines like that's very cool as well uh it hits all of those things that you're looking for in a giallo really really well um but it's just man you you really like i mean there's a couple of movies that uh do this do the same thing um where they they feature you know underage children basically in, in nude for some odd weird reason that they decided to include that um and this is definitely one of the more salacious inclusions that is going to be very hard for most people to be able to get over um i I didn't want that to be a reason why I didn't finish the film for the review, but um, I will probably resist ever watching this again until I can cut that moment out. <laughs> yeah, I I don't blame you. I'm about the same way on that one. Because I feel like it's completely unnecessary and does not need to be in the film. And with this day and age, I don't need Chris Hansen at my door and it's bad enough I own it on Blu-ray. <laughs> right? Yeah. No shit. But, I'm trying to scrub every digital evidence of it from my me- <laughs> <laughs> all the metadata from your hard drive. Yeah, yeah, just fucking. <laughs> yeah, uh, I will also uh, say this about the film: uh, the compositions of the shots are are beautifully done. Um, there's not a, there's not really a frame of this film that seems to be wasted. Although there are moments where there is that jittery, weird editing because they have missing frames for something. It, it explains it at the very beginning of the film. I don't quite understand what it is, but I guess there were frames missing here and there throughout the film and they tried to fix that as best they could, but there were still going to be moments that were going to be jittery or like jump cuts because there were missing frames. Yeah. Um, and I did notice a few here and there, but um, the way that some of that kind of jumpy editing happens nowadays, it wasn't too disorienting for me. It's kind of like my last thought was like, oh, I, I noticed it or I was aware that it was happening, but it wasn't, it wasn't enough to where it took me out of the film. I gotcha. That makes sense. And I would have preferred a warning that there was, you know, a choice made yeah. with the nudity up front, please. That would have yeah, been right. a better yeah. thing to warn me about than the skipping of frames. Yeah, that would be uh, uh that would be nice. That would have been a nice little, you know, heads up. Hey, just prepare yourself. There's some bullshit in this. Yeah, a content <laughs> warning for that might uh, you know. Yeah, might help. <laughs> yeah. Might might have helped. Yeah. <laughs> for the same reason why or, I don't you know, want to watch to the devil a daughter it. again. <laughs> yeah. Or just never having it. <laughs> right, right. Like I, I would like to remove it from any version I watch again. Absolutely, Matt. Okay, we're we're bitching about this too much. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're we're fine. getting stuck in all these doldrums of our moral high horses, Matt, where we just think yeah, we're, we're better than everybody else. God. I'm be- what you think you're better than me? Yeah, you know what I think we actually need to deliver for fucking once is the NFT news that we've been promising. So you better find something on our break here. All right, well, I found news. I don't think it's NFT news, but I found news. Well, find some NFT news, motherfucker. We've been well, promising it forever. But this news is so much better. I don't care. An NFT news first, and then we'll do another one. Fuck it. Fuck it. God damn it with you and your fucking NFT news. Shut Why the fuck up so I can play shit. the fucking toadies in Possum Kingdom because uh, it's another murder by water. Fucking dicks. Yeah, fuck you too. <laughs> Damn, man, Toadies and Possum Kingdom. Like, that may be yeah. their only hit, but what a fucking hit. Yeah, I mean, it, god damn, that was played all over the place. Fucking uh, back in the day. Yeah, when that song was popular, you were not able to not hear it anywhere. No, it, it, like, it, 
multiple different stations. Everywhere from the alternate station, the rock station, to even the pop station played it. <laughs> it was everywhere, and we were very sad about it and also happy about it at somewhat of the same time because you kind of like it. It earworms you. And as long yeah. as you hadn't heard it like 20 seconds ago, you were okay with hearing it. Exactly. You know what people haven't heard in like fucking forever, but they want to hear me say, Matt? What's that? Give me some psyop news. <laughs> NFT news like I promised everyone, and then we'll give you something better, I promise. From the economic left. Is that what it's e- called? Th- that's the article, or the, the place that posted the article, economic left, yeah. <laughs> I'm not an avid reader of that, but maybe I should be. <laughs> I think their title intrigues me, and I feel like I should subscribe to their newsletter. The NFT collector loses 2.2 million worth of board eight yacht club images to hackers oh yeah uh the, some the people got some of this back but yeah this is nft news uh, for adam smith from the independent rights an nft collector had 2.2 million dollars worth of ape images stolen by hackers i'm just gonna reread that because i think we all need to know it again uh, because <laughs> i just read it and now my eyes are bleeding so i would read it again because i want all oh, your ears just to, to pull bleed. it pulling it just yeah. to pull it an NFT collector had $2.2 million worth of ape images. Circle and jerk. then they were stolen by hackers. Okay. How do you... Oh, hang on, hang on, Matt. Yeah. May, uh-huh. I, may, may I just, for, for a moment? Go. Mr. Bond, your tokens are not as unfungible as you thought they were. <laughs> do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond. I expect all your... Ape images. <laughs> All your ape images are belong to hackers. The person, uh, the collector, Todd Kramer, stated, uh, now in a deleted post, he stated, I've been hacked. All my apes are gone. They just sold. Please help me. If only Listen, there was some I way don't... to have your purchases backed by insurance in some yeah. way, like on a federal level, that your currency would be more legit because it exists in a way that it can be insured. And if your tokens are truly yours and you own them and are not fungible, perhaps insurance will be made to where you can get them all back because therefore they are unfungible. They are clearly yours because of these certificates well, um none of this is true so therefore yeah. your currency and your tokens are not legitimate nor are they unfungible <laughs> nfts non-fungible tokens are digital receipts of images stored on the blockchain buyers do not own the copyright for the original image only the code behind the replica or token Bro, okay read that again read that yeah. again specifically Listen, about the copyright every paragraph again again and i don't fucking get it the world's changing and i don't like it okay read the copyright thing again just the part about where they don't own what? buyers do not own the copyright of the original image only the code behind the replica or quote token okay unquote. so what they are buying essentially is a digital copy with a certificate of that image but they don't own the specific copyright so whoever owns the copyright could then sell another certificate version of that image to someone else as a non-fungible token as well and they also own that you don't own yeah. solely just that image like you were trying to say you just own a certificate that says you own an image that any Anyone else can possibly own therefore fungible uh-huh yeah you just have a certificate that says you own this specific representation of it so you are buying a digital print with a fancy certificate for a ridiculous amount of money that anybody else can right click and fucking take the board ape yacht club the specific brand of image stolen are cartoons of algorithmically generated primates Rapper Eminem recently spent 334,000 pounds for a digital receipt of an ape that resembled himself. Fuck off. They're they're being made by algorithms because they are cynically printing these off, just letting people buy them, and then they can just reprint them again and keep doing this because you don't own the copyright, you just own the certificate of that specific image, which just means you own an authentic print for that much money, and you are paying as much as if you own 
own the actual copyright or the actual copy, the only soul painting of that artist, of that image. Right? Listen to me. The, the world's changing fast. And I don't like it anymore. And I want all you kids to get the fuck off my lawn. Right. Now, all I'm all I'm trying to say is, logically speaking, when you go down this rabbit hole with me of what they are trying to sell, yeah. you are paying. It's, you it's are paying. Bullshit. You are paying sole proprietary prices for these images be to be non fungible under the guise that the person who owns the copyright, the artist who originally created, it, will never sell it again. But that's not the case. That is never going to be the case because eventually they will run it through for some somebody else to do it with a different certificate like that's yeah. gonna happen because it's not copywritten they're not bound by any law to not do it just because you own that specific certificate uh, you're, you're yeah yeah exactly well mr kramer reportedly clicked on a phishing link purporting to be linked an app which led to the theft of the nfts uh in response OpenSea reportedly froze the nfts after the hackers put them back up to sale this led to criticism uh from some pyro uh some, some pyro for some crypto supporters but apparently he got them back so um congratulations i don't think he got all of them back he got some of them back but he still doesn't actually own solely the only version and or copy of that image if it was yeah. the only version and or copy of that image and then that is your registration for also owning the copyright of it too you, yeah you don't fucking own it like in you know what i mean like like no, you, no, legally speaking you. legally speaking that nft doesn't mean that you fucking own it it just means that yeah, you own no. you own that specific copy of it <laughs> jesus christ it's fucking Oh, the economy's now coming down to this. I mean, listen, man, just fucking launch the fucking nukes already. Let's just get done with this shit, huh? It's basically just another way to play fucking casino, and it's just another fucking scheme where it's like this upside down funnel, right? Because, like, instead of funneling the money, like, you know, from, like, you know, all over the place down into one small, you know, group, it goes up because you, you just keep buying. You see what I'm saying? And it's yeah. kind of like, um, I don't know, it's like a scheme that is like the shape of a pyramid. Yeah. No, you're, you, I get it. It's a, it's a pyramid scheme. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and people are just fucking raking it in and they're just like fucking going for it because it's like this new thing. And it's like, you don't, you don't have legal real, you really don't have legal recourse for this. Um, the way that they got it back is somehow somebody forced them to give it back. Sure. Yeah. But like, there's no guarantees for that. There's no promise that that's going to happen. And that's how they want it because it's like supposed to be like this wild west thing because it's this new currency or it's this new way of collecting art or or whatever but like you can't really have it both ways yeah no and uh i don't like to call it a pyramid scheme it's a triangle it's a triangle business model um so there you go <laughs> okay i got to vent about how they are not there in there is in no way shape or form that way you would talk about something being non-fungible that yeah. that these tokens are not fungible even no, no, even yeah. legally speaking with recourse because legally speaking copyright is the law and you don't buy copyright when you buy blockchain you just buy that image from that blockchain I, I i don't understand it i don't know if i want to understand it it sounds just fucking dumb <laughs> also i can right click and fucking take it too yeah <laughs> right click copy image oh my god look at me i'm into nfts now <laughs> that's not how it works what you're doing is taking that and you know what even if you have that copy he still owns it they still own it it's usually a he come on let's face it they're bros yeah i mean yeah it's, it's all about being bros and you know yeah. what if you're if you're a female nft collector and you want to change my mind just don't fucking contact me i don't fucking care i still think it's fucking dumb. <laughs> i don't care <laughs> okay we can move on and let's give them psyop news that they actually want to hear something about a severed penis probably yeah how'd you know because i know you my friend shut up are you talking about penises it comes from pete uh so man completely amputated his penis an episode of cannabis induced psychosis don't threaten to cut off my cock for 60 dollars <laughs> my dick and balls are worth a lot more than 60 dollars first of all i have <laughs> never in my life ever been whacked out on some of the crazy shit that i have done which is significantly worse than cannabis as a kid yeah not now not now no don't investigate yeah. me i'm all delta eight now but uh yeah, as, all as a kid delta eight all the time as a kid yeah. once the statute of limitations wore out from me doing those things obviously uh, <clears throat> I have never once thought of mutilating myself in such a manner just because I was fucking high. This is sus to me already. Yeah, yeah, this is a bit... I, I'm wondering about this one. All right. A man from Thailand completely amputated his penis in an episode of cannabis-induced psychosis, according to a new case report. Recorded, reported in the Journal of Medical Case Reports, a 23-year-old man had been using cannabis for two years before discontinuing the drug for a period of three months. Following this, he began using cannabis again, smoking about two grams using a bong. 
During the session, he experienced an erection unrelated to any sexual stimulation and started to feel sharp pains in his penis. The man, who had no prior history of psychiatric illness or other mental problems, uh, reported that the glands of his penis looked distorted. Attending to eradicate the pain, the authors write, he decided to trim the penile skin. Oh, fuck. Ow. <laughs> Several times, it completely amputated his penis himself using scissors. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Breathe through your mouths, everyone. <laughs> oh, breathe through your nose. Maybe it's better. I don't know. Oh. Okay, so the males in the audience have collectively all reached for their genital area upon hearing you read that out loud. Uh-huh. And while we're all doing this, I would also like to remind you... <laughs> Don't do it at oh. work. Ouch. Oh, no, 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 Dad, don't. If you're at work right now, just. Yeah, if re, you're at you work. Know, resist your, all. Yeah. Resist all. Cross, like, just res- cross your legs. Just cross your legs yeah. uncomfortably while at work. Resist the want to uh, grab your dick right now if you're at work. Because yeah. that's not going to look good for you. Um. Okay, okay. This is clearly someone who had some ide- unidentified psychosis previous to this. Because there is, there's no way there is any cannabis that is that fucking and strong no, to man, cause that's... that bad of a hallucination. I would believe yeah. that if you are predisposed to schizophrenia, I know that there is a possibility that cannabis can trigger that and make it worse. So that is a distinct possibility, but it's not just cannabis alone, right? Like there's something else underlying that caused that. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Whew. God, that's fucking that horrific, is, man. Yeah, some pain ass shit. This man. is All a right. hard episode for people to listen to, especially if you're into NFTs and Joe Rogan. Yeah, right. Uh, th- or penises. Uh, the man was aware of the process as it was happening. He later reported to doctors and attended the emergency room af- uh, uh, after the bleeding had not stopped after two hours. Shut the up. Are you team- talking about penises? The team was able to control the bleeding. However, they were unable to reattach the penis as it is deemed too dirty and fragile for reconstruction. The oh, remaining penile stump. Oh, that was, was silly timed. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was nice. The remaining penile stump was two centimeters in length with loss of the whole penile skin, they wrote. The amputated distal part of the penis was contaminated with ants. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. That's way worse than fucking just cannabis. It has to be. While recovery, the man was submitted to a psychiatric evaluations to determine the cause of his episode. His mental status examinations found he had visual and auditory hallucinations, such as seeing moving shadows, hearing birds chirping, or insects buzzing. Depressed mood and restricted effect. They write, noting he was coherent and delusional with no suicidal ideas. Yeah, no, that's, there's got to be something else, man. That's just there's, the man that's re- so extreme, right? Yeah, yeah, right? Uh, the man reported use of cannabis only, which a test of his urine confirmed with no other drugs or alcohol present. No other underlying diseases or family history of mental illness was found within four weeks of ceasing to use cannabis. His psychotic symptoms resolved. And the team diagnosed him with cannabis-induced psychosis, a rare adverse effect of cannabis. The team noted there had been around 100 cases in the last two decades. Wow, okay, so that is super fucking rare. Super rare. They also noted that the man could have had a case of proprietism, uh, where an erection lasts longer than four hours, despite the absence of sexual stimulation, or it could have been an adverse effect of cannabis. However, they could not diagnose him with uh, either of those, and as his penis was removed before four hours had elapsed. The man was offered a penoplasty surgery to lengthen the penis, but has since relocated and has been unavailable to talk to the team. Whew. Ouch. All right, so um, if doing cannabis makes you think you need to cut off your dick, maybe you shouldn't do cannabis, right? I'd move to Delta Eight, my friend. I don't think I don't think that's gonna help, honestly, because um, I have heard of something similar to that where um, like I I thought it was like schizophrenia, but there is a type of psychosis, I guess, that can be triggered, and I know that if you are also schizophrenic, it can trigger that as well. But it's just something about the way that the, the stimulation of the brain, like where the cannabinoids, you know, hit your brain, that causes that. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but like I, the psychosis thing, like 100 total cases, right, in the yeah. last 10 years, and they think he might be one of them. And yep. look what it cost him. His, his, his penile. 
<laughs> of all of the cannabis users that have existed in the last decade or so that they're talking about, for 100 people to suffer from that, what are the odds that he is the one that did the most damage to himself? And of all of the possibilities that could have happened, how is this not the absolute worst case scenario of this fucking hell world for this man, right? Yeah, like, I agree. Like, like of all the people that had a chance to do it, or all the people that have tried cannabis, or all the people that are doing this podcast on cannabis currently, <laughs> Delta 8, uh, <laughs> it's legal here. Uh, <laughs> but right. like, of all the people that ingest this shit over time, in you said it was a decade, right? Yeah. Yeah. In the last decade, a hundred cases that they've had of all the people that have ever ingested it, a hundred cases that they've, that they've obviously diagnosed and or found. And of all the possibilities of like how bad it could get for everybody else that had this kind of psychosis and what would happen to them. Like, yeah. like this guy has to absolutely have the worst story because if somebody has a worse story than this guy who fucking peeled his own dick, like a fucking banana slowly till it fell off. If they have a Ugh. worse story than that, I don't want to fuck. I can hear it. Yeah, I don't even want to know. And I don't think there is a worse story than that. I think that's the worst fucking story. That's basically what you described he was doing. Yeah, literally peeled his penis off. That's fucking horrific, man. Oof. Okay, I, Oof. I could see where someone could use that as an argument that they don't want to risk it. Yeah, but I would like I would I would just say just try it while being supervised by a professional, maybe. Yeah, if you're a little worried, maybe have a friend, a spotter there. It'd be like. No, man, don't worry. We removed all the scissors and sharp objects from anywhere. You're okay. <laughs> if you start acting a little weird and complaining about something that you want to cut it off, we're going to get you some help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tie you down and you're not going to get nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to make sure that you don't hurt yourself. And then when you're no longer a danger to yourself, we'll let you go. Wait, yep. wait now we're just you're technically flirting. We, we need to stop this. We need yeah, to get this episode yeah, we gotta off get right the fuck here. Out of here. Yeah, this, this is just getting really fucking uncomfortable. Okay. It's getting really weird. Yeah. Let's, let's end it with penis mutilation and move on. Clip. <laughs> If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Mean Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.
Nick Cave made an album called Murder Ballads. Of course, I'm going to feature two of the songs from Murder Ballads, at least, whenever I'm putting three Murder Ballads per episode, at least, in an episode for the Pirate Radio edit, right? Of course. But I had to include this one because Kylie Minogue really fucking sings her heart out on this song, and there is talk of murder by a river and or water of some sort, so we have come full circle once again. All right. (laughs) Well, now that we've come full circle, where's my car? (laughs) Hopefully in your driveway or garage where you last parked it because you're home, you weirdo. Right. That's why this room seems so familiar. Nice. If you would like to find other instances where Matt has suffered from alcohol-induced dementia, you can check the 338? What the fuck? How many fucking episodes have we fucking done of this fucking bullshit fucking show? Well... I don't know because due to my alcohol induced whatever, I don't know how to do math. <laughs> yes, you are definitely not allowed to do math. Well, I'm not allowed to do math or meth. Which one? <laughs> Both. All the previous All right. instances where that has taken place, legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops. And you can also find our memes and the meme repository on Instagram, cinema underscore psyops. You can still add Ooh, stuff. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm also available on Twitter. Let's just get the fuck out of here, everybody. At court underscore psyop. Yeah. We just want to get this done. Facebook group, Cinema Psyops. You know you can find the memes there. Yeah, we got we got something with some nudity in it that I had to take out. Let's just put it that and way. I, and I'm blaming Facebook on that, not not the person who posted it. Right. That's- Although it was full frontal nudity, and it was definitely going to get us sucked. Well, fucking suck. Why are we still talking about something I'm going to cut out? That's fucking crazy. Cinema Psyops <laughs> is our Facebook group. I'm available here as court psyops, cutting the fuck out of this fucking episode because both your hosts are delirious as fuck. One of them has some kind of marijuana psychosis while the other one apparently has some alcohol-induced dementia happening. Yeah, well, listen, it's great because I have a new conversation every 15 minutes. And if you think this is nothing that we should be making light of, you are absolutely correct, and you can yell at me, cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. That is something that I will actually listen to because you are absolutely right. We are in the wrong on that. Yeah, very much. We're in the wrong. We apologized already. Well, while you're out there wondering why the fuck court would end the episode on such a dour note, it's because the movie earned it that way. So kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch. You hear me okay? Hey, yep, here you good. All right, awesome. Start recording on your side? Yep, one, two, three, and everything's coming through the blue snowball. You're sure this time? I am positive now. <laughs> All right, quick question for you. Yeah. Uh, my Dear Killer, that's our, our last for Giallo January, and I know it's a cheat because we're recording this on the 31st, but God damn it, it fucking counts, and I'm going to make it count, okay? Yeah, it counts. <laughs> right, so uh, My Dear Killer is the one that you did. Uh, did you get Italian or English? What was your... Italian. Okay. Uh, the English language version exists, but it was like uh, dubbed from a tape. Okay. So Weird. like, like I think I'm going to I'm just, well, I'm going to, I guess this is going to go out to the world, I guess. I don't fucking care, but like, I think I'm going to take the English language dub from the Blu-ray and the Italian version and try and make like one of my own version of like a hybrid. Oh, where, there you go. Where like any, anywhere where the English dialogue isn't there, like from cutscenes or doesn't match up. I think I want to do that. And I think I want to have like a fan edit I want to do of that that I'm going to have for myself. That would be awesome. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so you're agreeing on that. So uh, we, why, why don't we spoil it, right? Five for five, right? Like, fuck it, right? Five for five. Yeah. It, oh. it was, that was a five for five. Yeah. Fucking awesome. Okay, cool. It was cool. way too fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you're rolling. You're on your snowball. I'm rolling. Yep. This is the end of Jallo January. Let's fucking do it, right? Let's fucking do it. Here we go. Yeah, that's my lazy dude. That's that's kind of cop I would have been. <laughs> yep. I'm like, this looks like a complete total accident. All right, boys. <laughs>
Let's kick back for the rest of the day. Yeah, you would be perfectly happy to retire at uh, that place in Hot Fuzz, whatever that small town was, the village. Yeah, right. <laughs> you yeah. would so fucking love to be there because you'd be like, yeah, of course that was an accident. God, people really are accident prone around here. Yeah, well, geez, I mean, it's crazy. You'd be the well, lazy cop that would form a safety committee because you think that would make your job even easier. God, that would be so easier to have a safety committee. <laughs> Right? And if we had a safety committee, fuck, we wouldn't have to do any of this shit. And also, who wants to think, yeah, guys decapitating people as excavators. I mean, why, why Besides not? me. Like, I would be the kind of detective where everybody would be like, Psyop, shut the fuck up. Nobody just murder someone with an excavator. Le- legit, legit. A guy could come up, go, listen, uh, the 12 people, I killed them all by myself alone. They killed themselves, and you would sit there and go, he had help. <laughs> Unless they reach him by torture, I don't trust a confession. All right, look, I fucking hate him because he's a cop, and I think she's wonderful because she's a doctor and saving lives, and I'm on her side. Okay, but what if you didn't know this? She's a doctor who doesn't believe in vaccines. Yeah, just fucked it up for you, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, they do not say that in that fucking movie. You're just trying to fuck with me. <laughs> Like, I was about to fucking go off, and I know that you're just trying to activate, like, my fucking anger right now, my man. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. That was kind of, that was the whole deal. Oh, <laughs> that what a great. fucking outtake. No, like, I'm boiling right now, Matt. I'm fucking boiling. Like, you, we should move on. Okay, let's 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 just move on to the next 20 minutes and see what happens, because... Okay. Whew, okay, wait, hang on, hang on. Three, two, one. Uh, hold on, I'm sorry. It's okay, I just gotta come down from this. Jesus, fuck. <laughs> Oh, right, I right, fucking right. played right into your goddamn hands, you bastard. You, you, you really did. I, I did not expect that one to go as well as it did. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Just for like a second, I'm like, wait, did she fucking say that shit? And like, I started saying, yeah. oh, you fucker. I'm like, is he fucking buying this? I mean, all right. Um, By the way, that was that movie that I showed you that one death of where the guy got stabbed up through the chin that was too much for you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, because it was the girl with the pins underneath her eyes, and I was waiting for ocular penetration. <laughs> then the dude got stabbed through the jaw with just fucking, I didn't even see that coming. <laughs> That's what it was. You were so worried about one thing, then you got hit with the other, and you were like, "Dude, yeah, that's yeah, too yeah, much." Fuck it, Jesus, yeah. I think that's. I like. I like. Had to do a shot at your house when we left because I was like, "Fuck, dude, what are you doing?" <laughs> no, no, I gave you a little bit of what I used to make zombies. Is what that was. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, whatever it was, it was fucking delicious. However, there are no prints. Um, I don't want to live in a world without prints. <laughs> Well, you are living in a world without prints. I know. I ain't happy about it. I'm not at all. No one is. <sighs> all right. I need you to be able to get yourself together, but I also have to take a fucking piss. So why don't you take all a right. minute and we'll move on from that scene. Go ahead. And I'll be right back. Okay. All right. All right. Still there? Yep. Yeah. Sorry, man. I'm, I'm getting back into ketosis and it's fucking killing me. Not a problem. Forward slash cinema dash psyops. I'm fucking stoned. I want to fucking get this done. I really have to fucking take a piss. So kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch. <laughs> I, I had nothing, whatever. That, well, you had to pee, so I was trying not to, you know, interrupt you so you didn't piss yourself. Yeah. And I have ended recording on that.